the starting nine for head coach Ryan Fulmar. 72 degree night, we're underway with a swing and a foul ball. One of the best receivers the Hawks have had in the last few years. Chopper to the left side, Aloy can't come up with it. Try to stir up that pot and see what comes out the other end. There's a pick off at first base. Fisher kind of lulled Rodriguez to sleep and then he broke at the wrong time and that leadoff air is erased. Another 2-2 pitch to Booker, wave and a miss at that 79 mile an hour floater. He's not afraid to pitch into righties. Gets the swing and a miss at the plate. Stahl will be tagged by Roland. I think he's got enough wristbands and watches Man, on is. that left hand. That's strike three. Perfectly placed from Fisher to strike out Rogers to end the inning. Holt had a couple of hits and a walk back on uh, Saturday in game two, and he's going to walk here in less than 100 at bats. He'll be plunked, so Arkansas. Spoiler alert, it's at the bottom of the league for now. Roland to bunt, drops one down, picked up by Sanford, and his throw to first is in time, so Roland with the sacrifice. And that's high, and that's ball four. But again, there have been no shortage of bases full of Razorbacks. A 2-2 pitch to Stovall. Drill towards right center field. Rogers will take it on a bounce. This will chase home a pair, and Arkansas has an early lead. Peyton Stovall has seven runs batted in in his first four games. Watch how long he keeps his barrel in the strike zone right here. That is a pitch that's in the very bottom part of the zone, and I tell you, he does an outstanding job dropping that back knee and staying level as he goes through the baseball. So if you have any other more 1980s Cubs, there's a liner in the left for a base hit. Wilmsmeyer will score on the base hit from Aloy, and it's a 3-0 Razor back lead. So if you got any other 1980s Cubs or others you want to <laughs> send me, I'll take them. But I, I, I'm leaning a little more towards the Sandberg than Glen Allen Hill just by the uniqueness of their setup. But McNeese walked 10. And that was in seven innings. A big chopper to the right side, fielded by Whipperman, and they're able to get the out at first. Here's the throw home in time to cut down Stovall. That's just a great play right there. Whipperman doesn't give up on this ball. He gets to it, makes an accurate throw, but what a heads up play by Sanford, the pitcher, to throw a strike to get Peyton Stovall at the play. Field at South Dakota State, and I said, well, this is their old one. Where's their new one? And they said, this is the current one. I said, you kidding me? As Casey waves and misses. It's a really dandy changeup, and again. Well, there's Dylan Whipperman with the second base hit for ORU, a line drive to right field. Could be. Whipperman runs. Ball four to Rodriguez, so two out single and then a walk. Right here. Hard hit. Knocked down by Aloy. Throws to second, close but safe. He's been hit by a pitch four times this year, and he stands somewhat close to the plate. Strokes one out, shallow center field. Wilmsmeyer will glide in and make the catch. Here's a payoff. That one's left up and hit hard in the center for a base hit. Chopper to first. Filled nicely by McLaughlin. Back to first, started and ended by Ben for the 3-6-3 double play. Turn the double play. That runner's going to be safe at second base. There's strike three. So a leadoff single, a double play, and a punch out. McIntyre faces just three in the fourth inning. McIntyre doesn't walk many. He won't here. Gets the wave and a miss. Facing a red-hot TCU team. Diggs drives one high in the air. Deep right center field. Back to the scoreboard. Goodbye. Home run number three for Kendall Diggs. 30 degree launch angle, hit one up, and then it kind of disappeared into the video board in right center. Well, you knew he hit it well, 104 off the bat. And again, it was just that little bit of breeze blowing in from right field, and it, right. it knocked that one down. So off the bat, Kendall thinks, hey, I caught that one pretty good. But what that was that wind going to do? And it, it, it cleared by a decent amount halfway up the video board. But again, you've got to hit the ball a ton. Singled and walked. Going to shoot one out to right field. Comes out of the glove of Booker. And Holt never stopped. The Wild Stallion goes coasting into second base, and he makes it by an eyelash. If he's not racing at full speed, he would have been gunned down at second base. Chopper up the middle. Fielded by Herring at short. Low throw in time. And that's strike three. You think that ball's going to hit you as a left-handed hitter. Yeah, it's, it's really, really tough. 
you know, he, he didn't get pitched around like he is probably this year. Holt cutting in front of Aloy, throwing on the run, nicely done, two outs. That's why DVH has all his infielders take a lot of ground balls at every position. That's nice Kyle swing. Booker, single in the center, so he worked really hard to get back. Ball sacked to right. Diggs getting turned around a bit. The wind might help him get there to make the catch. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are playing tonight, aren't they? I think so. That's a great one. That, that ball's, ball's hit tagged. Well. Hit in the air. Deep left center field. This one's got a chance to go, and it pops out of the glove of Lovich. Herring just missed a homer. Lovich just missed a catch. And the Golden Eagles have a runner at second base to begin the seventh inning. A little bit. Socked just beyond the reach of Aloy off the bat of Rogers. Herring had to wait to make sure that ball wasn't caught. And here come the Golden Eagles, runners at the corners and nobody out. This ORU seventh inning, another fly ball hit well to left center. Playable for Lovich. He's going to make the catch and throw in towards second base. Tagging and scoring is Herring with the first ORU run of the game. It's 4-1. ORU has scored this inning. There's a chopper, could be two. Aloy will flip to Stovall, on to first. Scoop by McLaughlin. All of our storylines coming together. They get the double play. Stovall's back, and Betty Barrels picked another one at first. Score from second, he was out. And Arkansas gets a leadoff base runner aboard. He inherited a 2-0 count, so it didn't take him long to issue a walk. Swing out of the zone. Chopping. Not an easy play. Patton will make it. In essence, it works as a bunt. Patton working quickly. Wave and a miss. Three pitches and a K. A big second out. The infield can retreat to regular depth. Patton's pitch. On the appeal, our third base umpire says that's a swing and that's a strikeout. It's a little bit more each pitch. And he gets the wave and a miss. Me a year ago about Frank, to your point. Little soft flare off the bat of Rodriguez will dump in for a base hit. So a one out single in the eighth. Rodriguez not running down in the count. Is that a swing on the appeal? No. Two on, two out, two balls, two strikes. And a ground ball to a vacated spot with Aloy in the hole. It is going to score a run. And there's runners on the corners after the single by Stahl. It's a 4-2 game. I guess I wasn't watching where Aloy was setting up, Troy, but that's a routine ground ball to short, but he wasn't anywhere close to his normal spot. Yeah, they had him positioned well in the hole. And he was probably about 40 feet away from this. He's not even in the picture right here. Again, that is a 10 hopper that Drew Stahl hit, but you can see where Aloy is. He is nowhere in the zip code mm. close to that baseball. Well, that hurts. That ball hit well to left center field. Lovich racing over, still chasing. He will make the catch. Gackles 2-2, strike three called. On the ground, a skimmer right to Stovall. Peyton has not had many plays today. Handles that one, two outs. Wave and a miss. Arkansas has won 10 straight games, and the number one team in the land tunes up for conference play with a 4-2 win over a good ORU team.